and welcome to Narrowboat Chef. Today on the menu we're going to be making a lentil spaghetti bolognese. It's one of the nice quick easy meals that we do quite often. Like all the time. All the time. <laughs> um, so we're substituting lentils instead of beef mints. Not because we're vegan or vegetarian, it's because it's much cheaper than buying beef mints. <laughs> it's a nice cheap meal. Um, we are putting beef stock in it to give it a beef flavour. But if you are vegetarian or vegan, you can just leave it out and it's still pretty tasty. Yep. So let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. Put a pot of water on to boil for the spaghetti. Finally dice half a brown onion and begin sweating in a hot oiled pan. Add one tablespoon of minced garlic and continue cooking for about a minute. Mix in 500 grams of drained lentils. We use green lentils, but any lentils are fine. Add two tablespoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of dried mixed herbs, and half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Add 400 grams of tinned chopped tomatoes and stir in. Then add 250 grams of passata. If desired, stir in some beef flavouring of some kind. Since we're using cooked tinned lentils, the cooking time is drastically reduced because we don't have to seal anything off or soak and boil lentils beforehand. But if you have any dry lentils beforehand, just soak them in some water half hour and then put them in, uh, put them in a pot on the stove and cook them out for about half hour to 45 minutes and they should be soft enough to use. Add one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, season with pepper and add a pinch of sugar. The sugar will help balance the acidity of the tomatoes. So that's our lentil bolognese ready. And now we just need to do the pasta. And then eat it of course. <laughs> the vital step. The vital step. <laughs> So I've seasoned the water, um, I seasoned the water just so when I'm cooking the dried pasta and the pasta is getting seasoned at the same time. A lot of people say you put oil in your water but that's not necessary unless you're cooking fresh pasta. It doesn't really change the boiling temperature of the water, it's just mainly you put the oil on top when you're doing fresh pasta so the pasta doesn't stick to one another as it's entering the water. With dried pasta it's not a problem. You've got a special technique for opening spaghetti, don't you? Yeah, I do. It scares apprentices for the first time when I do it. So I grab my packet of pa my spaghetti pasta like that, and I just bang it on the bench. And see, it's all burst through the top. No fizzling, baffling. It's ready to go. When you're opening 20 packets at a time for a big banquet thing, as long as you're not going to fiddle with each individual packet, are you? <laughs> and then when I'm putting spaghetti or even any kind of long pasta that's set up like this in the packet into the water, I spiral it like this. It's much less likely to stick to one another if you just dump it straight in. Chop up 10 fresh basil leaves and stir them into the bolognese. When the pasta is ready, drain the water. So when I'm cooking pasta, um, 
I always cook it al dente, which is, it trans roughly translates to to the tooth, which means at the center of the pasta, once it's cooked, it should be ever so slightly firm, almost like a, almost like a crunch. You know, it gives a bit of texture when you're eating the pasta and it doesn't go all soggy. And usually, especially in commercial kitchens, when you're cooking the pasta, plating it up, putting it under the heat lamps and the server takes it to the table, it finishes cooking out by the time someone's actually eating it. And why did you put the oil on it at the end? Because I have to do the little talky thing about it. And if I leave it in there too long, it'll stick. <laughs> <laughs> So there we are, that's our lentil spaghetti bolognese. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Quick, easy and cheap. <laughs> yeah. So like Rowan said, we put a beef stock pot in ours just to give it that sort of beefy flavour. But mm. you don't have to, it's completely up to you. If you do want this recipe, then click the link in the description below and that'll take you to our website which has all of our recipes on it. And if you try it, don't forget to send us pictures on social media. <laughs> yeah, I still enjoy seeing. seeing some of those. Yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> the curry puff ones look so good. Yes. We'd also like to say thanks to Linda Perus, who has become a new Apprentice Chef level patron. So thanks, Linda. We do yeah. appreciate it. We do appreciate Helps. all our patrons. Yeah, appreciate everybody. And the people who also send us generous gifts through Patreon. Um, PayPal. PayPal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Why do they both have to start with P? <laughs> so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I can't wait to eat this. This looks so I know. Good. I've been like been holding up to my face to take photos. <laughs> and I keep going. going. <laughs> this one's mine. You have to get your own. I already started doing my own. <laughs> this is up inside here. I'm surprised you haven't eaten it yet. I didn't get any fancy basil on mine. <laughs>